It's 2025 now, and is the old school way of doing HVAC dead now? Because if you think about it, from equipment to comfort standards to technicians and contractors, it's all changed. But what is old school HVAC? And should we go back? Well, let's talk about it. Hi, this is Kenneth with Atlas AC, and at any point during this video, if you find it to be helpful, please hit the like button, and that will really help me out with the YouTube algorithms. Over the last couple decades, there has been massive changes in the HVAC industry. From the equipment to the distributors, contractors, and even the way that homeowners buy, there is just simply nothing the same anymore. And these changes appear to only be accelerating, some for the good, and some not so much. But what has been made clear is there's now not a whole lot of room for the old HVAC methods. So now let's talk about what caused all this and where this is all going to lead to. Okay, so let's do a real quick history lesson. Back in the 50s and 60s is really when we saw middle class homeowners starting to adopt air conditioning. But central air conditioning didn't hit widespread adoption until the 70s and 80s. And by the late 80s, pretty much everybody had air conditioning. And this is really when we see the HVAC industry hit maturity. Manufacturers were now building robust AC systems that were built like tanks. HVAC contractors and distributors now had their businesses dialed in. And in this time frame, many would consider it to be the golden era of HVAC and what would be considered today as old school HVAC. So if you look at HVAC equipment, it really wasn't all that complicated. They're built to last and manufacturers also made it fairly easy to repair them. So we saw air conditioners easily lasting upwards of 20 to 30 years, and that's not even pushing it. And the primary type of equipment that was being sold was single stage equipment. So a bare bones on off system. These systems were extremely reliable, but were a long shot away from being efficient. And homeowners really didn't mind settling for a bare bones AC system. And that's because pretty much everybody in this time frame remembers a time when they didn't have any AC. So when it was 96 degrees outside, it was also 96 degrees inside. And that made it difficult to do basic tasks, and you might as well forget about sleeping at night. And now that a house was able to maintain 82 degrees inside when it's 96 degrees outside, that made everything way more manageable and dramatically increased the quality of life. So people were simply over the moon just to simply have AC. So some manufacturers started to experiment to design more efficient ACs. And by the late 90s, some manufacturers developed out multi-stage equipment. But in this time, this was more for a manufacturer to show off their technical feats. So that's tantamount to, let's say, Dodge making the Dodge Daytona. They only made 500 production cards and most likely sold them at a pretty big loss. Also, they can enter that model in NASCAR. Overnight, they became a dominant force and it only lasted for like one year because soon after, NASCAR banned it. However, a legend was born, and Dodge got a huge amount of notoriety. So pretty much all manufacturers want to display their technical feats, because people will naturally gravitate towards them more. And in air conditioning, this was a multi-stage AC. Just like the Dodge Daytona only selling 500 units, very few people were buying multi-stage systems. But manufacturers had the ability to wave around how they're now the best. Now if we shift gears and jump over to the service side of the industry, the most important thing to a contractor was their reputation. And that's because back then things were a whole lot more community based. And that means word of mouth was a very, very big deal. And if you ended up getting a bad name in the community, that means it could put you out of business. So running an ethical business was top priority. So if I had to sum up what old school HVAC is, is that everything was just simply straightforward. The equipment was all straightforward. People were simply happy to have cold air. Contractors couldn't play any games with their customers. So everything was just straightforward and just worked. Now, this leads us to our next era, which is the end of the 2000s all the way up to 2020. And this is really where we see the industry start to change. Now, starting off with the equipment, we see the longevity start to go down and AC units are no longer made as robust. Some of this had to do with minimum SEER ratings being increased due to regulations. However, I don't think it had a massive impact on the longevity of the equipment because manufacturers could easily increase the size of, let's say, the evaporator coil and condensing coils, which increases the surface area in which the air passes over, which allows for more heat conversion, meaning more efficient. Now, I'm sure there are other modifications to things like the motors. However, I do think where the biggest impact comes from is when R22 got regulated out from being used in new HVAC equipment. And the industry adopted R410A as its replacement. And when we compare the two refrigerants, the differences are substantial. 410A does have a higher operating temperature and the pressures are substantially higher, meaning it's just harder on the equipment. And if it's harder on the equipment, it's just not gonna last as long. So this is tantamount to leaded gas being regulated out of the automotive industry. Unleaded fuel operated at higher cylinder compression and didn't run near as smooth. And overall was just harder on the motor. This is the exact same thing here. We also see homeowners changing their palate on indoor climate. 82 degrees was not really cutting it anymore. 
People were now wanting their indoor temperatures to be around 75 during the middle of summer, not 82 degrees. So now homeowners are needing bigger AC units, and these units are also going to be running longer throughout the year. So there's going to end up being more wear on the system. So AC systems used to easily last in between 20 to 30 years, but now with the combination of equipment changes and homeowners using their ACs more, they now only last in between 15 to 20 years. And as comfort becomes more and more of a priority to folks, we see an increase in sales in multi-stage equipment. But really what this is, is the embrace of technology. Because this is the late 2000s, and things like personal computers, the internet, and cell phones are now a thing. So we find ourselves in the middle of a technological revolution. And this technology was now starting to be incorporated into HVAC systems, which was first integrated into multi-stage systems. And again, these systems are the flagships of these manufacturers. So they're wanting to display their technical innovations. So these were the systems that were starting to integrate things like a computer into them and Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. And you would think that this would make these systems a whole lot less reliable, but that's not really what we see. For instance, growing up on a ranch, me and my brother had an old Toyota Land Cruiser that we would drive around. It would just handle like a champ. If we had a trailer with 20 round bales of hay that needed to be moved, we would put it in four low and then we would be about our way. However, it was pretty hard stopping. If we wanted to drive up a mountain that was pretty much vertical with no road, not a problem. If we wanted to take it on the highway and go down the road to eat lunch at a restaurant at 12 years old, not a problem. So on-road, off-road, driving it way outside of factory spec, it just didn't matter. It got the job done. And this would be tantamount to an older single-stage system. Now a newer multi-stage air conditioner is closer to, let's say, a newer car that's designed for the highway only. So if you keep it on the highway and run it within factory spec, you're not going to have a whole lot of issues with it. However, if I try to do the same thing that we were doing with the Toyota Land Cruiser, it's probably going to break down day one. That's the exact same thing with a multi-stage system. So as long as it's operating within factory spec, you're not going to have a whole lot of issues with it. So the HVAC design and installation become extremely important getting it right. Because if either of those two things are wrong, you're going to have nothing but issues. So as cities grew more and more, Along with the internet and social media starting to become commonplace, contractors started leaning pretty heavily on advertising over word of mouth, meaning their reputation started to become less and less important. But many contractors still held themselves to a fairly high standard, and that's because a lot of these companies were still being ran by folks from the past decade or so, and still held themselves to that kind of standard. So if I was going to sum up this era, the old school methods were still playing a pretty big part, because the folks that are running the show now all participated in the previous era. So there ends up being a lot of carryover. Now the changes that we're starting to see is the embrace of technology, which is starting to add some complexity to everything. Now from 2020 to present, this is where we see a huge shift in the industry. Now in regards to equipment, we experienced two regulatory changes. We had an increase in minimum SEER ratings, along with another refrigerant change. Now in regards to the refrigerant change, manufacturers had to move away from 410A and all their new equipment. And the bulk of the industry adopted R454B as its replacement. And there's one manufacturer that ended up going with R32. Now, unlike the phase out of R22, I don't think it's going to have a big impact on the reliability of the equipment because both of these refrigerants perform very similarly to R410A. Similar pressures, temperatures, and efficiencies. Now, these refrigerants are mildly flammable, so additional safety features had to be added to the equipment. Other than that, it's pretty much business as usual. Now, the big impact came with the SEER change. So, in this regulation, they changed the way that SEER was being measured. They started to include things like static pressure. And the problem with this is single-stage equipment were just a mile away from being able to meet these standards. So everything had to be redesigned. And at this time, HVAC equipment really couldn't get any bigger because they would no longer be able to fit in closets and attics. And if they went up in size, it would probably require a remodel in order to change out an AC system. So really the only solution was to make things a lot more compact. So now going back to my Toyota Land Cruiser analogy, how you could just run it way outside of factory spec and it would just keep chugging along. And that's how single stage equipment used to be. But now because of this change, that is no longer the case. The HVAC design now has to be designed for your house and for that unit, along with having a good install. Because if either of those two things are not done right, you will start having issues in the next year or so. So just like a multi-stage system, that doesn't mean that we won't be able to get 15 plus years out of it. It's just now everything has to be designed and installed according to factory specs. And as long as all that is done, you shouldn't have any issues. We also see folks continue to gravitate towards nicer and nicer systems. So we're seeing the trend continue more and more towards multi-stage systems. And for us, that's either a two-stage system or a fully variable communicating system. And 50% of our customers will usually choose one of these two systems. So we're really seeing widespread adoptions toward these systems. 
And I think some of this is due to us spending more and more time indoors. And that's especially true here in Texas during the Texas heat. And if we're going to spend a lot more time indoors, we might as well make our homes a lot more enjoyable to live in. Because you end up with a lot better temperature control, humidity control, along with energy savings. So it's clear that us Americans are continuing to gravitate to better and better indoor air climate. And the area that probably has the biggest changes is with the HVAC contractors. And the reason for this is we're seeing a lot of the baby boomers exit the industry. So there are a lot of good technicians who have been in the industry forever, and they're just now simply opting to retire. And a lot of business owners are also selling their businesses and retiring. And in my last video, I talk about PE firms taking advantage of this situation. And they're coming in and buying up pretty much every single company that's for sale, at least here in Texas, in hopes to consolidate them and roll them up and sell them for later. So with all these companies now being bought up and moved over to a different management team, or just simply a different generation of owners coming in, so what's happening here is people are now starting to become just simply a number on a page. So instead of taking care of the customer and their needs, now it's more like, how do I maximize what I can get out of this person right now? You might be thinking that word's eventually going to get around and people are going to quit buying from them, but that ends up actually not being the case. Because with cities being as big as they are now, along with all the available advertising platforms, you can simply advertise your way around this problem. That's why every time you turn on the radio or look up at a billboard, you see an HVAC company. So the old school thinking used to be, how would I take care of this customer if it was my grandma? And now it's really moved over to, how do I maximize this ticket? And a lot of technicians really don't have a choice in the matter because most of these companies pay commission only. So if you're not selling, you're not feeding your family. So really, if I'm going to sum up these last few years, we see basic bare bones systems not as robust as they once were. So now if a basic AC system gets installed with a bad design or poor install, it's no longer going to be able to power through it, along with folks gravitating to more and more advanced AC systems to get better comfort and more energy savings. And now when it comes to HVAC contractors, they're really giving the industry a black eye right now because you really don't know if you're getting an honest opinion, if they're overcharging, will the new AC system be properly designed for my home and installed correctly? Am I working with a good company or a bad company? And overall, is this creating a lot of confusion? So everything back in the day used to be simple and straightforward, with a whole lot more trust and integrity. Now things are more complicated and confusing, with a lot less trust. So now folks are finding themselves watching videos like this one to get a whole lot more educated in order to navigate the HVAC industry. I know it's probably a headache, but it is worth it, because it will help you to make the best decisions for you and your family. So now you're probably asking, where does this all go and what does the future of HVAC look like? Well, on the equipment side, there's not going to be a whole lot of changes because the only regulatory change on the horizon is for minimum efficiency standards for gas furnaces to go from 80% to 95%. But that's not going to happen until 2028. Other than that, there shouldn't be any other regulations implemented for the next 10 years or so. Now, there is going to be more and more technology that's integrated into these systems. However, most likely not so much from a mechanical side, but more from the digital side of things. And for instance, a communicating HVAC system can pop error codes when something's going on with it. This helps to protect the equipment and track down the problem faster. And at some point, this is probably going to get integrated into everything including base model systems. So it's going to work very closely to how the automotive industry works. Your car's check engine light comes on, so you take it to the mechanic, they plug it into their computer, see the error codes, and then present to you what's going on. So now if you think back before this was implemented in the automotive industry, you had to simply take your mechanic's word. And that made it very easy to take advantage of the situation. And that's exactly what they did just like what HVAC contractors are doing today. So as error codes get integrated throughout the industry, this is going to force contractors to clean up their act. Now this is going to take a while to trickle down to the contractor. So we're probably not going to see contractors clean up their act for another 10 to 15 years. So when it comes to contractors, we're probably at a low point and will most likely be here for the next 10 to 15 years. But after that, things should start getting better. Now I don't want to come across as all gloom and doom because there are some good contractors out there, but they're just a lot harder to find now. And with tools like the internet and YouTube, it has become a lot easier to get educated, making it a lot easier to see if a contractor is full of it or not. So for folks like you getting educated on the industry, you most likely don't have all that much to worry about. And the reason why I'm being so critical of contractors is because I'm frustrated with the direction things are going. And if you are one of the good contractors out there, don't give in and keep doing the hard work because at the end of the day, it will pay off. Now, if you're a homeowner looking for tips to better help navigate the HVAC industry, we have a buyer's guide on our website to help folks better navigate some of the most common questions that homeowners have. So if you have a few minutes, you might want to check it out. If you found this video to be helpful, please hit the like button. We also have free buyer's guides and price lists on our website that you might want to check out. Until next time, have a good one.